In this video, I'll show you some techniques for enhancing hill shades using Photoshop. This is not meant to be a comprehensive procedure of things you should do to process a hill shade, but rather a demonstration of the things you can do. For a given project, I might use one or more of these techniques, or none at all, depending on the quality of the original hill shade output from ArcMap, and how much time I'm willing to spend to further enhance it. To start with, I've produced three hill shades using ArcMap's hill shade tool and spatial analyst, with varying levels of vertical exaggeration. One has less vertical exaggeration with a z-factor of one-half, and that's this one here. The next has no vertical exaggeration, it has a z-value of one, that's this one. And then the third has more vertical exaggeration with a z-value of two. I've also produced a slope raster, which is this one right here, that shows the areas that have high slopes and also the areas that are flat in the black. And then I'm also including just a raw DEM to show me the areas that are high in elevation and the areas that are low in elevation. I put each of these five layers into a single arc map data frame, locked its extent, and then I'm going to turn each one on and off and export it as a JPEG at 300 dpi for each respective layer. It's also important that each layer be symbolized using this linear black and white gradient. So I put each of these five layers into a single arc map data frame, locked the extent of that data frame, and then I'm going to turn each one on and off and export it to a JPEG image at 300 dpi. So for the elevation that's turned on right now, I'm going to come up to File and say Export Map. It's going to save it 300 dpi as a JPEG, which is fine. I'll call it Elevation and hit Save. Then I'm going to turn the elevation off, turn the slope on, and repeat that process for all five of those images. So now you can see I have five JPEGs for each of those hill shades and also the elevation and the slope. Now if I come over to Photoshop, I want to open all of these images in different layers so they're stacked in registration one on top of the other. Because each image is the same size and has the same resolution, they'll line up perfectly with one another. So if I come up to File, and then go down to Scripts, and Load Files into Stack, I can browse for my files, and here I have my five JPEGs. I'm just going to select the top one and hold shift and select the bottom to select all of them and hit open. And now each of these source files will be added into a single layer of the Photoshop document we're about to open. Hit OK. So now it's opened all the files, and if we open the Layers panel here, you can see that there's a layer for each one of those files. I'm just going to move the Hillshade half layer to the top, the Hillshade 1 layer right below that, and the Hillshade 2 right below that, and then we've got these slope and elevation layers at the bottom. You'll see that layers in Photoshop are fairly similar to the ones in Illustrator, except that each layer here only contains one image rather than multiple objects or paths as they do in Illustrator. The rest of the Photoshop environment is also pretty similar. You've got a toolbar over here with a variety of tools that you use pretty often. Each document has its own tab here that you could bring out or you can dock it also up in the main window. You've got options for various tools up here at the top along with menus. And then you've got panels that dock here on the right. So our goal in working with all these different hillshade images is to blend them together so that we use different parts of each hillshade image for different parts of our terrain. For instance, we might want to use this hillshade 2 image and I'll just make these other layers and I'll just make these other layers that are on top of it invisible so that you can see the hillshade too. This vertically exaggerated hillshade has much higher contrast and so it brings out this ridge right here of the Green Mountains much better than say the hillshade with a z-factor of one half. So we'd like to use this hillshade too for these high elevation and high slope areas. On the other hand, this hillshade with a z-factor of only one half has fewer artifacts, has less visual clutter in these flat areas, and we'd like to accentuate the fact that these are very flat areas, and so we'd like to use this hillshade in these flat areas. So we're going to use something called layer masks in order to tell Photoshop to use parts of one image in one place and another part of another image in another place. And we're going to use the slope and the elevation images to create those layer masks so that it will show the hillshade half or the one with less vertical exaggeration in these low lying and flat areas and the hillshade two or the one with more vertical exaggeration in the places that are at high elevation and have high slope. Before we get started with layer masks, let's do a little pre-processing on this slope layer right here. So I'm just going to turn off the visibility of these other layers and let you just see the slope. Right now there are these very specific wider bands that show the areas of high slope. And what I'd like to do is actually blur this whole image surface so that we see more generally areas where there are higher slopes and areas where there are lower slopes. So the, what I'm going to do is select this layer, make sure that slope is selected, come up to filter, and blur, and Gaussian blur. 
And this will give me this little tool here where I can control the radius of that blur. And I'm just going to make the radius high enough so that I can see general areas of high and low slope. So here I've got some lighter areas here, a lighter area there, and a larger, darker area where it's flat here in the center. That looks pretty good. That's about 35 to 40 pixels of a radius. And now I might want to manipulate this just a little further so that I have more contrast between these light areas and dark areas. So I'm going to come up to Image and Adjustments and Brightness and Contrast. And that will open up this little tool where I can increase the brightness of that image. And I can also reduce the contrast so that I'm getting whiter areas here and darker areas there. It's a little counterintuitive that I'd actually be reducing contrast, but if we increase the contrast, then so much of this area is dark right now that it's, it's actually not going to show us much bright area at all. So this is my goal of having sort of lighter areas here and darker areas there and I'll hit OK. Now we can start using the slope and the elevation layers as masks on these hillshade layers. So the first thing I'll do to make a layer mask is put the contents of the slope image in the clipboard. So I've got the slope layer selected and I'm just going to come up to select and say all. I could also hit control A. And now I've got this marquee going around my entire canvas that's showing me that I've selected this entire area. And because I can only see slope and it's the layer that's selected, this is the layer I'll be selecting from. So then if I go up to edit, and copy, then I've copied that image into my clipboard. I'm going to go to select and just say deselect to turn off that marquee and that selection. And then I'm going to come up to Hillshade Half and make a new layer mask. And when I've got that layer selected, all I need to do to make a layer mask is come down to this Make New Layer Mask button right here on the bottom click that and then I'll get this separate panel on that layer with a little chain link that connects it to the first to demonstrate that this is the layer mask that's linked to this original image. Now I want to place the slope image that's in my clipboard in this layer mask. And to do that, I'm just going to turn that layer back on so that I know that I'm working with that. I'll turn slope off. I've got this layer selected and I'm just going to click on the layer mask panel there so that I'm working within that. Now I want to come and turn my channels panel on so that I can see the channels that are contributing to this layer right here. And you can see that we've got this standard RGB, which is the combined red, green, and blue channel, and then we have separate red, green, and blue channels. And then we also have this mask channel down here, and I want to place the contents of my clipboard from this slope image into that mask. So I'm going to turn that mask on and select it as the channel that I'm working with. And then all I need to do is come up to edit and paste, and I've pasted the contents of that slope image that I copied into this mask channel. The red is signifying the contents of that mask channel. The red won't be visible in our final document. And if I come over here and click back on that layer, you, you can see a little bit of fuzziness, but you really can't see any of that hill shade through that mask that we've just made. And that's because the bulk of that mask is actually dark rather than light. And the light areas of the mask are the places where you're going to be able to see the areas of this layer that this mask is affecting. So to change that, I'm going to come back and select that mask and then again select and turn on the visibility of that mask channel. And then I'm going to come up to Image and Adjustments, and I'm going to invert that mask channel so that rather than being mostly dark and then having a few very subtle light areas, it's mostly light and has a few very subtle dark areas. And now when I come back and click on this layer, you can see that there's actually a large part of the hill shade that it's showing, and the invisible portions where this checkerboard pattern is are the parts that are at the high slope areas that we've defined as this ridge line. So now we want to go and put the same type of mask on this hill shade 2 layer, and we want to do that with the elevation image. So I'm going to turn off hill shade half and then come down and turn on elevation. And I've already got my selection marquee there, so I'm just going to make sure that this elevation layer is selected, and then come up to edit and hit copy. Now I can turn off that layer, deselect so I don't have the selection anymore around the entire canvas, and then come up to Hillshade 2, turn that on, and make a layer mask for Hillshade 2. And then I'll repeat the same process where I'm going to select that mask area, come over and turn on the mask channel, make sure it's selected, and then paste right into that mask channel. And now you can see that all of the areas of this Hillshade 2, except for those high elevation ridgeline areas, are masked out by this mask that's largely dark in the center portion that's at lower elevation. So now if we add the Hillshade half to the Hillshade 2, I'll turn on both at the same time, and I'm actually going to drag Hillshade 2 up to the top so that it's drawing this one first and then the Hillshade half below it. 
You can see that it's drawing hillshade half in these low flat areas and then hillshade two largely in those upland areas. I'm going to turn on hillshade one in the background just to fill in any places where both of these happen to be semi-transparent. And there's our final compilation of these layers using the masks.